Hello, I'm uh, Ian Shepherd from the European Commission's Directorate General for Maritime Affairs and Fisheries. And I'm just going to give a little bit of background before we start the main part, which is more uh, focused on the, the Blue Fund. So next, first slide, that's, that's me. If you go to the next slide. So Europe is, seas and oceans are going to change a lot in the next uh, 20, 30 years. Uh, we're going to, they're going to play a massive contribution towards reaching zero carbon by 2050. At this time, we're going to expect electricity consumption to double. Uh, this is because we'll have electric cars in steel making, etc. We'll move to electricity. And to produce that electricity, more than a quarter of that will be generated offshore. That's more than fossil fuel today and twice as much as nuclear. So the investment needed is massive. If you can see where we are now, this shows the investment both in the infrastructure and in the transmission lines that are needed um, in offshore wind. So we're around about 5 billion a year, 6 billion a year uh, now for capital investment. And we're going up to uh, about eight times that by uh, 2030, so 2035. So this is an enormous change. And not only that, uh, the 2050 scenario suggests that we'll need more biofuel. And this will mean less land for food or wilderness. Already, uh, Europe is short of uh, wilderness. So we, we, we don't want to uh, create uh, uh, more, lose less of it, lose more of it to uh, create uh, biofuels. But there is a possibility uh, of, that the sea can make up for this. If we look at algae, uh, they have a low impact for food and feed. They can also be cultivated in bioreactors. And these have a much uh, lower requirement for, for land. In fact, they're produced offshore. So, And uh, because of the COVID uh, virus, we're also looking at what we can do for tourism because this has been the hardest hit uh, sector in the blue economy so and it's both tourism is basically a coastal phenomena 38 percent of nights spent in tourist accommodation in europe are in coastal municipalities and 30 percent of nights that europeans spend on on vacation or at beach resorts so it, this is a coastal phenomenon so we're trying to, looking at ways that we can help the sector create better jobs and recover from the uh, crisis, but in a more sustainable way than it is at present. And you can see there different uh, suggestions for uh, improving the sustainability of the sector. But from what I've said before, I was talking about 50 billion investments, but what we we also notice is that all these big players these big industries are supplied by a whole ecosystem of small industries that are pr producing new uh, innovative technologies for improving the effectiveness and efficiency of the blue economy for instance uh, robotics digitalization uh, it's, uh, new coatings that are rust proof or biofouling proof and if you look the amount we've got a project pipeline of over 500 projects coming from these SMEs and we can see that the funding they need is in the range largely 1 to 10 million something like this to help them move things forward expand becomes uh, move to different markets so this is what the blue invest is all about helping these companies move into the new markets that are emerging so ne ne now we're going to learn about the blue invest fund thank you ian very good um and i think before uh, going into the the, the star of the, the the session um the blue invest fund 
Um, I, I, I think that for, for people who are not aware of Blue Invest, maybe the, I, I pass the floor on to Daniela um, to, to speak about Blue Invest and, may, and to give you a couple of updates about, about what is happening um, with this initiative. Daniela? Thank you, Catherine. Thank you, everyone. Good, good afternoon. Pleasure to have you here. So um, we at PwC, we are very proud to be part of this project, this initiative by, by the Commission, by DigiMari, and also by the EASME, the Executive Agency for Small and Medium Enterprises. Mm -hmm. And um, this is, um, you know, the, the main focus of Blue Invest is to support growth, economic development, and investment readiness of SMEs in the blue economy. So this covers the whole of uh, the EU countries, um, all SMEs are eligible to participate, to benefit from this community, um, and there are a number of resources available for them, but also for investors and corporates. So I want to talk to you a little bit about the structure that we have in place. So the first thing we have is a community. We, we have a community actually based in Inneroquity, which some of you know, and, and we're going to you know, show you a bit later a little bit. Um, and here, people can connect, uh, they can have access to a lot of relevant information that are exclusive for community members. So this includes uh, fact sheets, it includes webinars, it includes an, a digital academy as well. So we have a lot of resources so we can spread the knowledge and more importantly, spread the business opportunities available in the bill economy for investors because we, we do have a lot of SMEs ready actually to, to receive investment. So, but what we notice as well in the market is it's growing. We have a lot of momentum uh, happening now because of the EU Green Deal, but a lot of investors are not yet specialized in, in blue economy. This is growing and it's becoming more and more. So here we have a, a place where people can understand opportunities available for them. And also to animate, to engage, to network. We have a lot of events uh, through the community and a lot of connections um, available. The Academy is part of the community and this is available for all SMEs that are receiving assistance as well from, from the, the project. So if you look here on the, on the screen, the, the square here on the, on the left at the bottom, it's called Blue Invest Readiness Assistance. So in the course of duration of, of the project, which will be until 2022, we'll be providing technical assistance to 200 SMEs in topics related to investment readiness, market access, uh, bringing innovation to the market, sustainability uh, measurement, you know, how, how to convey your sustainability value as well. And so 200 of them get 10 days of coaching by specialized and certified coaches uh, from Blue Invest. And the idea is to help them to, to become a bit more mature, a bit more ready to actually uh, receive an investment or to go to the market and, and you know, have more economic development. In addition to that, we have also a, a Blue Invest project pipeline. Ian mentioned this a, a little bit earlier. Uh, so we are developing a deal flow uh, of relevant projects and relevant companies in the blue economy that either received assistance from us or were identified as high potential, as interesting as having new technologies that are of interest. So we have built this pipeline, and this will be available actually online. You know, through the website, the Blue Invest website, people will be able to log in and then um, be, uh, view more information about each company in the pipeline. And if they want to get in touch then with the, with the project, with the company, they are able to do so. So this is a great resource for investors and a great opportunity for the SMEs to showcase themselves. So uh, we, we want to really uh, uh, promote this, this pipeline. We have events as part of the community. We have coaches, uh, as I mentioned, to the readiness assistance. We have the grants, you know, I call it Blue Invest grants, uh, which we claim the old, as known as uh, EMFS grants as well. So this is part of the, the whole uh, community and the platform. And the funds, which um, we'll hear about more about in, in a little bit. Maybe if we go to the next slide. Just to tell a little bit on, on the update. So the community is available and live on uh, Eurocrity, so you can access it through our website, blue-invest.eu, and then on there you can go and access and join the community. We have nearly 500 members in the community, so we really encourage you to, to join to have access to more, more content as well. 
we have a series of webinars and which we are promoting through the community, through the website. So webinars on topics like today, the Blue Invest Fund. We had a webinar on crisis management, for example, uh, for COVID uh, impact on the blue economy. We have things about internationalization, about market growth. So there, there is a series of relevant webinars for SMEs, but also for investors on the opportunities in the blue economy. We had the first, uh, we're going to have the first e-pitching session, I think now in May as well. So we selected five projects to pitch, and there is a number of investors waiting to hear them. And we have events. Obviously, our initial plan was to, to have uh, physical events together with uh, fairs, you know, uh, relevant industry events. That's not possible. If it is possible, we will do. If not, then we're going to have virtual events uh, with a very nice agenda, very relevant content for everyone. And we are in social media, so you can find us on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, website. So please um, find our, our handles and please connect. One more. Yeah, one more, one more update I have is the um, uh, readiness assistance. So for those here that are SMEs, we are accepting applications for cycle four. So we have nine cycles of assistance throughout the program. We are on cycle four now. Each time we select about 25 SMEs to receive this 10 days of one-to-one uh, -one coaching. So it's really high value for them. And uh, we, we expect companies, once they receive this assistance, to be in a much better level of maturity. So it's quite relevant. We have articles as well in the community from coaches. The pipeline, as I mentioned earlier, will be launched very soon. So this is something, please watch out. We will be communicating as well, and we probably will organize a webinar to show you a little bit more. And we have market snapshots, market opportunity snapshots for six sectors. And you know, this is very important for investors when they're looking for opportunities, new trends, and um, potential investment um, you know, focus for them. We have the Club of Investors, which is also through our community. And uh, we are launching a call uh, for corporate days. So we, we're going to have the first one organized in, in October, and we want to have a, um, a big participation also of corporates into, into the Blue Invest platform. Because the idea is not only to have investors trying to put, put money into the SMEs, but also corporates as potential clients and platforms for knowledge exchange and for improving the quality and the experience of those SMEs. So in summary, there is a lot going on. This is a very active community. Uh, there is, you know, uh, fantastic support from the initiatives. And obviously, we have also a, a fund now, which uh, helps uh, the case very much. So thank you very much. I'm going to pass it to Jerome now, please. Thank you very much. So good afternoon, everybody. Uh, it's my great pleasure to be uh, here and to, to talk to, I think, uh, 264 attendees. It's uh, amazing the, uh, the attractivity of this, uh, of this theme, and I'm uh, very pleased to, to represent the EIF and the team that is uh, working on the Blue Economy <coughs> today. Can you switch to the next, next slide, please? So, uh, very briefly, a short introduction to the European Investment Fund. So, EIF, we are a, a European institution, so part of um, um, uh, the EIB group and uh, another uh, institution of the EU alongside, you know, for instance, uh, the Commission and uh, other institutions that are helping uh, all the, the, the European countries and the economy uh, across different activities. EIF has a specific focus to the support of SMEs. And um, the way we are doing it is mostly in an indirect uh, manner, so through intermediaries. So opportunities like today's for us to have a kind of direct contact also to the community is very valuable because typically uh, my daily counterparts are venture capital investors that are in their turn investing in startups are, and then they are in direct contact with the with the economic um, uh, field and, and the economic activities. So EIF has been a very long standing player in the venture capital market so to support uh, innovative companies across Europe and beyond. So far, we uh, have invested in over uh, 480 uh, funds. And uh, wow. through these funds, uh, a very large number of co portfolio companies have been benefiting from EIF uh, funding but also from uh, a kind of leverage 
private funding that is kind of catalyzed by EIF uh, commitment to the funds because we are never the only investor in a fund. We are always alongside other uh, public and also, more importantly, private investors. So if you see the five billion of outstanding equity investments in venture capital funds in Europe, you can multiply that by five or six to have the total you know, uh, size of uh, the, the VC funds that are indirectly supported by EIF and uh, where EIF has played a, a very strong catalytic role and, and triggering more investment in, in these startups. So if you turn to the next slide, uh, I, I want to uh, have a short uh, overview of uh, the activity of EIF in what we call the clean tech venture capital. And, and uh, the blue economy is uh, one of the segments of, uh, of the clean tech space, as we, as we can see. EIF uh, has been for um, over uh, 14 years a player, a very active player in this market, one of the largest uh, and the largest investor in sustainability uh, VC funds across Europe. Uh, with a very large number of fund managers across uh, across the continent, and uh, in total of uh, over 220 companies in this clean tech segment that have been supported uh, indirectly by EIF, and also uh, in total, if you look, you know the multiplier. Uh, we have invested almost 600 million in these funds, and in total, uh, these funds have raised 2.8 billion. So it's a very strong uh, catalytic effect of the EIF. Uh, to support uh, funds, and then in in, uh, in return, other investors are investing as uh, alongside EIF in these funds. But EIF, uh, it's it's called a fund, but EIF is in in fact is not investing its own money. Uh, when we invest in in funds, we invest in fact uh, uh, money that we take from different resources, mostly the EIB group uh, and the European Commission money. So, uh, in fact, when we invest this uh, 600 million in sustainability funds, uh, it's money uh, partly from uh, the EIB group and partly from the Commission, and it comes uh, usually with some uh, policy objectives and that we discuss uh, for a long time with our counterparts at the EIB group and also at the Commission and also with um, uh, member states of the EU that uh, also provide funding for, from the, to the EIF to be invested in their countries and in their neighboring countries as well. So we uh, have discussions with them to um, structure uh, investment activities that are meaningful to the market and that provide a long-term support to innovation and to economic development across the EU. And if we take the example of you know, this sustainability and this clean tech funds that we have supported in the past, we have been extremely um, um, uh, active and, and uh, uh, a very important element of the structure and the structuring of these uh, investment activities into um, clean tech funds. So what we have been doing with the Commission and with the DG Mare over the past few years was to think of how to uh, create and stimulate investment into, uh, into the blue economy as part of, uh, as Yen uh, explained earlier, as part of a, a general uh, a need uh, for this economy to be supported at the innovation level and at the growth level, uh, and also uh, as part of the, the willingness of the EU uh, to uh, go into uh, the, the Green Deal di direction and to support uh, you know, uh, investment activities that would have a long-term uh, uh, environmental, positive environmental impact uh, on, the, on the EU. So uh, please, next slide. So uh, the result of these discussions have uh, been to, uh, to, uh, to create what we call now this uh, a blue uh, invest fund. It's a pocket of 75 million that have been uh, allocated by the, the Commission uh, from the uh, DigiMare uh, activities and from other activities of the Commission to be channeled by EIF to the market through uh, venture capital funds that would have uh, a, a you know, specific focus uh, on blue economy. So in, in, in fact, what it means is that uh, in addition to the other resources, uh, that we are uh, uh, that have specific also other policy objectives. Uh, so you, we have currently discussions around uh, uh, 
uh, artificial intelligence. We have a lot of activities in the life science sector. We have activities in, in social impact investments as well. But uh, with the support of, uh, of the Commission, with this 75 million uh, blue economy invest, uh, blue invest fund, uh, we are putting a, a, an emphasis on, on the you know, creation and, and structuring of the investment activity into the blue economy. So what it means is that uh, we are now uh, uh, calling the market to, and, and uh, discussing with venture capital fund manager that have a, um, a specific se uh, sector focus and knowledge, a specific sector and market knowledge of the blue economy to come to us with proposals uh, of funds that would have a significant activity and investment activity into the blue economy, as uh, Yen de de uh, depicted it. We have a definition that is on the, on the left part of the slide here uh, of what we mean by this blue economy. It's extremely broad exception, but what we, um, what we see also as a common denominator to that is a, a very strong requirement for these funds to have a, a strong on a positive environmental impact. And uh, at EIF, we, will, um, uh, we are uh, putting on the market uh, a methodology to make sure that this fund will actually reach their impact uh, objectives, because what we don't want is to have you know, a, a willingness to have an impact, but not real impact on the long term. But uh, we want to really achieve a positive environmental impact on the long term uh, through most of our activities, but especially from this uh, Blue Invest Fund. So, and if you uh, remember of uh, what I was just mentioning about the catalytic effect, when we talk about the 75 million, we expect that there's uh, at least a double amount that would be invested uh, in this blue economy. So uh, we, from the 75 million from the, from the commission, we expect to see in at least 150 million to be invested in the long term in a blue economy uh, startups and, and, and companies uh, across Europe. It would be, uh, on this slide, it's mentioned that we'll also consider co-investment schemes, but mostly it will be investments into funds. I know that uh, in the attendance, there's a lot of um, persons that are not uh, from the venture capital industry, and they, you, you can legitimately uh, ask yourself, you know, what's uh, you know, the benefit for, for us? But if you're active in a, in a, in a company that is in the, in the blue economy, uh, you can also uh, talk to uh, venture capital funds that uh, would benefit uh, from this blue economy, uh, blue invest fund from, from EIF, uh, and, and they would uh, invest from their own fund, but uh, that this fund would, would have the possibility to, uh, to have been uh, supported by this um, blue invest fund uh, from the EIF. Next slide, please. So just to, to go into a bit more details, uh, not everything is to be discussed today and, and uh, we'll certainly take questions and answer questions not only today but also in the form of a Q&A uh, that we'll uh, publish later, uh, you know, taking the questions from today and other, other items. But in terms of uh, expectations, so we, we see that uh, funds that can be supported by EIF under this, uh, this scheme from the Blue Invest Fund, they need to have a very significant focus on the EU and the focus, as I mentioned, on SMEs, but we also uh, have a, a possibility to go into mid-caps. But there's a very strong emphasis on innovation and, and uh, uh, you know, growth of, um, of, the, of the sector, and it comes with, uh, with innovation. Uh, Yen was talking about billions in investment in uh, renewable energy infrastructure. It's not the purpose of this fund at all. But uh, we are talking about uh, startups and, and uh, uh, growth, uh, early growth stage companies. So uh, there's a, a bit of a time frame constraint on, on this uh, because uh, in our discussion with the Commission, we, we discussed of uh, setting this uh, 75 million pocket as a kind of pilot. Uh, and you probably know that uh, the uh, current programming period from the Commission ends in the, at the 31st of December. So there's a deadline for us to get approvals on this, under this mo mandate by end of this year. But also we view this, um, uh, this as a kind of pilot for the next programming period. And we are talking currently with the Commission of a, a larger um, uh, and, and extremely significant amount 
uh, of money that would be channeled from the Commission towards uh, climate-friendly um, initiatives in the EU uh, for the next programming period. And it's obvious that if we see um, a, a very a strong uh, stream of projects and interesting stream of projects uh, in the blue economy, uh, the, the blue economy would not be set aside for the next programming period and would probably benefit significantly from, from the efforts. And again, um, EIF, we look at a lot of proposals each year. Uh, some are, uh, have a specific focus on, on this or this industry. We currently receive uh, proposals uh, with a, an angle into the blue economy. It can be part, part of the strategy, or we also see blue chip players that would say uh, we are a blue economy fund only. Uh, but also we see, uh, for instance, agriculture funds uh, that uh, would say, okay, we are investing part of our, our, in, our funds into uh, agri um, aquaculture or uh, culture of algae uh, that fits into the agriculture umbrella, but are part of the blue economy. And we can also consider this investment under uh, the blue economy mandate. And nevertheless, whatever happens, um, uh, from uh, 31st of December and onwards, we'll continue to look at blue economy funds as part of our investment into climate and environment impact uh, activities. So uh, I think that's all from, from me today. I, I, uh, if you put the next slide, please. Uh, you please, uh, uh, all of you, if you have further questions, you can, uh, we will we'll organize a Q&A, but we also uh, welcome your questions uh, directly uh, to either me, uh, Jerome, or to my uh, boss, uh, Patrick Gresco, uh, and Stefan is, uh, is uh, our lead uh, on the kind of discussion with the, uh, the Commission on, on the structuring of uh, this uh, blue economy uh, activities. So please, please reach out to us. We are really uh, looking forward to hearing back from you. And uh, I'm uh, looking forward to seeing you uh, very soon. OK, thank you very much. Um, we've, we've had um, a few questions that have come up. So I'm, going to, I'm, I'm just going to go through them, the first one. So uh, we had one on who can join the Blue Invest community. Um, and I'm very happy to say all of you who are interested in the blue economy, or if you have, a, if you are part of an organization, an SME, a startup, you are in a, a corporate, and you want to be involved in a community, um, I will ask my colleague Sharif, who is in this call, to just chat to everybody the link uh, to join Euroquity um, and to go into the to join the Blue Invest community on Euroquity. And I think, um, if, if I'm not mistaken, I think Christina. Um, our colleague from Euroquity is also in this call, and, and they have a very good platform uh, where uh, startups and projects can also directly link with investors who are in Euroquity. Um, Euroquity has been in this, in this field for the last, I think, over 10 years now, so they've built up a very good uh, community of investors and, and EU projects which are, which are in there. Um, I have a question for actually for, for my, my colleagues, Ian and, and Renata, who are on the, the Blue Invest pipeline, um, because um, they are asking, um, when do you expect to start populating this section of the website, or is there a way to, how do, I, how do you join it? Hello, everyone. So thank you, Evelina um, and Meredith for the questions concerning the pipeline. So um, the link to access the project pipeline will be shared with everyone in the chatter. Uh, you can uh, both ways either send an email directly to me in the email that will also be shared and I will collect your interest and start assessing your projects or you can already go directly on our website and um, fill in the form of interest that is worth for both for projects interested in being showcased as well as for investors interested in having more information about our showcase initiative. As the Bloomfest pipeline is uh, being built and uh, launched for start of um, applications today, we still don't have uh, the showcases on the front end of the website. However, we have more than 400 initiatives already mapped and um, very eager to be, to be showcased. So hopefully, as soon as we start processing all these requests, we'll be able to elaborate and um, have them open on the website for you guys by the end of this month. Thank you. 
I've got one for uh, Jerome. Um, one issue that is often not paid much attention to is the protection of nature and conservation. Um, would, do you di invest directly in that, or are you more focusing on making traditional sectors more sustainable? Maybe it's for Jerome and Ian, actually, this question. Nature yeah, and conservation. Yeah. yeah, that's a very good question. It's um, I think it's very close to to our hearts to uh, to protect the oceans and protect the nature. However, um, uh, the investment from the EIF, it's we don't have uh, you know a kind of predefined um, uh, sector focus. And and uh, if a fund manager comes to us and says, uh, yes, we we want to uh, uh, set up a fund that would be specifically or that would have an angle towards a protection of nature, our next question is, what are the business models associated to that? And, and if there are uh, business models, I'm totally supportive of that, and, and we would not object at all. The, the difficulty is that uh, these uh, venture capital funds are directed to, uh, profit, to for profit organizations, and, and, and uh, this is the question. However, uh, at the contrary, what we will strive is to have uh, funds that invest in companies that would have a kind of positive impact on their environment. Uh, so not protecting uh, the nature itself, you know, as a kind of you know, um, uh, investing in, uh, in a kind of reserves of parks, which is a kind of um, not-for-profit activity or difficult to, to, to materialize as profit. But if you invest in companies that, have a, a, uh, that bring innovation that leads to a lower impact to the nature, I think you have a, a very large impact on, on the natural preservation. I think also, we've, we've seen in the pipeline some projects using biotechnology for bioremediation, uh, you, which is uh, biological ways of removing pollution, which can be used. And these, assist, these are, uh, we've seen them, they have some business models, they, we can see that they're scalable which means they can be applied elsewhere and pro there are examples of, of uh, projects generating revenue or potentially generating revenue that can be supported and the, because the the as jerome says the the fund supports they must be revenue generating and they must also support eu values such as low carbon circular economy nature preservation, etc. Thank you. Um, the next one is, um, is an international organization based in Turkey eligible to apply under the Blue Invest Fund? I, I would tend to say uh, that, again, and, and maybe to answer to this question and to many others that I've seen on the Q&A, uh, EIF, uh, we only invest in, in funds, so we are fund of fund investors, so we do not invest directly into companies. However, uh, the uh, focus of the funds needs to be on uh, uh, at least two-thirds into the EU, and there's, uh, you know, the 31st person can be elsewhere. And also in the EU definition, there's uh, always some discussions around, you know, uh, associated countries. I, I don't have today the formal answer whether Turkey would be eligible and if we see a fund that would be uh, directed di specifically onto Turkey, whether it would be eligible due to the, um, uh, you know, uh, you know, s certain legal specificities. That, and then I would recommend that you contact us or, or look at uh, our website for more clarity. Thank you. I, I guess, uh, Jerome, is it also the case for the UK? Because I think they are still in until the end of December. Yes, so, and, and, and uh, UK is, um, as, you, as you can all uh, understand, it's a, it's a bit uh, difficult question. Uh, but funds that would have a focus on UK uh, would not be eligible uh, as uh, UK won't be a part of the EU from 31st of December this year. So um, uh, it, the EU and associated countries need to be uh, fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, there's a question on where can we find the eligibility criteria for the funds? 
that and will be you know uh, that will be published uh, extremely soon in our website we also have some information on the blue invest website are deep sea exploration projects or companies eligible to the blue invest funds maybe i, I put it to 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 ian and jerome on this uh, deep sea exploration projects or companies mm. Yeah, as long as, as uh, we can uh, see a kind of a positive environmental impact uh, to, to these activities, I do not see why we should, uh, you know, exclude them as a, as a principle. For instance, uh, I think, um, you know, there's a lot of offshore activities and, uh, in the oil and gas industry, for instance, that are extremely polluting uh, but, uh, and, and that are related to fossil fuels uh, extraction. But any innovations that would improve their uh, environmental footprint, uh, to my understanding, should be eligible uh, to, 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 the, to the fund uh, and, and to our indirect support. So this is a bit a uh, question of, you know, um, uh, it's a sensitive issue. And we, we think also it's not only eligibility, but it needs to be um, to have a, a long-term sustainability because investing now in a company that would not have a long-term future uh, would not make sense and we rely on fund manager to make this assessment it's not uh, EIF doing you know the assessment whether it makes sense so uh, no uh, firm uh, against on that uh, it's it's um, uh, it's more in the details that needs to be to be looked at yeah I think that's a good answer yeah. <laughs> Renata, uh, have, have you seen any other questions that I might have missed? Um, we do have quite a few, so I'm going to try. I try to group them by topic, so um, we can try to address first um, on the continuity on talking about sustainability. We have Dunya Rio who, who asked, uh, "Will we be how will we be assessing the positive impact on nature? Is it based on environmental assessments of Rio data, or is it to, sufficient to have?" Uh, potential positive impact, impact so for companies that are not yet in the market exactly that's a very fair question and and uh, on that we uh, are um, uh, we have uh, taken a, a quite open approach because here it's not a, about you know carrot and stick it's more about you know uh, being uh, pragmatic and and um, not incurring uh, you know uh, unnecessary work or, uh, you know, uh, using uh, costly uh, third-party evaluators that would look and take a biased anyway uh, view on, on the, the positivity of the, uh, of the activity. I think, you know, it comes also from a kind of theory of change uh, background. We, we won't seek uh, intentionality in the impact. So a company that has at, at its heart uh, to create a positive impact on on uh, on, the, on the economy, it should be uh, easy to understand uh, that uh, whether they are going into the, the right direction or not. And we promote the use of uh, KPIs that are suited to the current stage of development of the company, be it uh, KPIs on the potentiality for kind of companies that is still developing its technology. And then we could look at you know uh, whether the technology is offering a material. Uh, progress or uh, um, better solution compared to the state of the art uh, and then for companies that are uh, at the implementation at the commercialization stage then you can look at you know the extensiveness of their uh, of their impact so uh, maybe the number of cubic meters of water that is saved on things like that so but uh, we want to take a pragmatic approach we are not here to um, uh, we are here to, to to make sure that it goes in the right direction and it's mm -hmm. not uh, extremely clear. And, and there's always a question of whether you, you are um, exhaustive in your approach and whether you do not miss uh, negative externalities. So we rely on, uh, on, the, on, on, the, on, the, on the belief that if something, uh, if an inno innovation uh, has more drawbacks than positives, uh, it will at some point uh, be sanctioned by the market, so investors should not invest in them. Mm. Very clear. Um, still on the funds, we had uh, another question from Marie Bourgeois, where she wanted to know if um, 
uh, a group of projects is able to apply for the fund? Or only single company? Yeah, EIF, again, um, that's a very good question. EIF, again, we do not invest in single companies or in, in groups of companies, in consortium uh, or things like that. We invest in, in funds that mm -hmm. would in turn invest in, in companies. And these funds, uh, and the, you know, the rationale for that, doing that is uh, first, you know, the scale. EIF, we are um, a small entity. So we could not have a, a you know global reach or you know e pan-European reach. So uh, having uh, fund managers across Europe uh, on the local market is more efficient. And the second fact is that uh, it's it's providing an extremely large and significant leverage on our uh, on the funding from, for instance, the, the Blue Invest Fund, because uh, we expect to see. At the level of the funds, uh, private investors joining uh, the EIF and the Blue Invest Fund uh, in, the, in, the, the, in the venture capital funds that we support. And then uh, these funds, they will pick either single companies or consortia or whatever they, they believe is the best uh, for, for, for them. It's not really our decision. Perfect. Okay. I have one here on the future of um, the, the fund. Uh, Jerome, do you do you see um, after this first um, this first round? Do you, what are the what are the, the the chances that there will be a renewal? I I, I I don't have a crystal ball for that, but what I can say is that uh, and again, uh, this uh, uh, blue invest fund it's it's a rather small uh, portion of our activity. Uh, just uh, at the level of uh, our team that is doing all the this venture capital fund of fund activity mm -hmm. on a kind of normal year, we invest typically 1.5 billion uh, euro. And, and this, then you can say that this 75 million pocket is a small pocket. Uh, but mm -hmm. to put it in perspective in, on the long run, uh, uh, what we expect is that we'll continue and we'll increase our activities in the sustainability segment, uh, so climate and environment impact, where uh, the Blue Invest uh, activity uh, belongs. And, and uh, I think wherever, um, uh, you know, one of the, the, the benefits of this uh, pilot is to generate a stream of uh, attention uh, from, uh, uh, in all directions to the blue economy. And um, whether we'll have a dedicated pocket under InvestEU labeled blue economy uh, and it could be uh, called InvestEU blue or whatever, it's some, not something that is under my control or has been decided yet, I don't think so. But what is certain is that this trend that we are creating now with this blue invest fund will last and that will uh, at EIF and also at the, on the, at the community uh, and the Blue Invest uh, uh, community um, uh, will last and, and create attention for that and will um, stimulate investors and, and startups alike to, to apply and to create uh, value. And wherever we'll see a positive value, we'll invest. So if uh, fund managers come to us uh, in, uh, in 2021 with uh, solid proposals, uh, we'll find money uh, to invest in them wherever it comes uh, with um, a labeling from the commission uh, as blue economy or where it's uh, just a portion of our uh, sustainability uh, investment window that will uh, strive to increase years after years. Uh, I, to, we have the platform which has features, um, as uh, Renata explained, as uh, Daniela explained earlier, we have the, the grants, we have the assistance, we have the, the funds. The, the platform will continue, and uh, we're, as we move into the EU's next financial framework starting in 2021, there, there will be investment money available. This will continue. And having started it has created this momentum that will give us something to build on. So something will keep on moving as we in next uh, in 2021. 
And Renata, again, any other? Uh, sorry, sorry, please. sorry, Drew. Go ahead. No, I'm just. Uh, I, I think we cannot uh, think about this uh, green new deal. Um, at the EU level without uh, a significant portion of it dedicated to blue economy, uh, to the blue economy, because it's a uh, very strong part of the answer to the, the challenges that are ahead of uh, the EU. Sorry. Yeah. No, no, that's um, fine. Um, actually, that, that's a good segue into, into one of the other questions I see here on impact of COVID. How do you all see the, uh, the impact of COVID on, uh, I think, the Green Deal, the blue economy, and, and where do you see maybe the fund or the initiatives playing into this? Jan, you want to take it first? Yeah, well, <laughs> I think it, it, it has made a difference, clearly. Uh, and uh, as I said in the presentation right at the beginning, the hardest hit sector is tourism, clearly. And uh, this is where we find a lot of, uh, it's a precarious, low paid sector anyway, with a big environmental impact. So as it changes, we see this is maybe where we, we look to find more opportunities to create a new, more environmentally friendly tourism, for instance, with the uh, um, lower carbon footprint, local products, for instance, that. Uh, reduce the necessity for air travel uh, or car travel. So this is ripe for innovation. Uh, we don't want to go back to what we had before, maybe. So we want to create good jobs, higher paid jobs, uh, benefits to the local community. And on our side, we see that, um, uh, as, you, you, as I mentioned several times, EIF is uh, one of the, the features is that we try to catalyze private investments alongside to EIF uh, commitments to funds to stimulate uh, innovation with the support of the private uh, money. Uh, in the current environment, we, we anticipate that there will be a bit of uh, you know, a low tide um, on, on the private uh, investment uh, to, to innovation. And uh, all the discussion we have currently with uh, our counterparts at the Commission or uh, at the European Investment Bank and also with member states is to um, be uh, armed with uh, bigger, uh, deeper pockets to be ready to, to come out, somehow replace the, the absence of uh, some of the private investors in the innovation, uh, so that um, during the you know the aftermath and the, the year, the two or three years to come, EIF will uh, will play uh, an even greater role on the market. Also, from from the community perspective, what we noticed is talking to SMEs in particular, we've seen much more requests for assistance right now, which obviously uh, reflects the impact the the whole crisis is having on SMEs. And those that are more traditional, less um, digital as well, obviously are, are being quite impacted. So um, this, this also has an effect on the whole value chain because corporates are investing less, so they are having less access as well to sell their products to, to the big players. So there is a big gap for them as well. So in our project, we, we, we've seen much more demand for supporting services for SMEs. Yes. Um, and then just addressing another question from Lena Hodgson, in this um, context, the technical assistance, so the nine cycles that we'll be providing are not going to be um, changed, there will, not, there will not be any impact from COVID. So all the assistance cycles will remain active and will be delivered virtually by our coaches. Yes. Yeah. I mean, the, the program has clearly also um, been impacted by COVID, um, primarily uh, because we, we had all these physical events that had been planned and all the events were either postponed or canceled. So that's why we have a larger focus now on virtual events uh, and on more targeted activities. And we want to continue to, to help uh, to support the um, the events industry where it is safe. And, and so the, the general principle of the program is that we will take it to, to uh, localities where we can guarantee the, the safety of the people who are, who are going into an event. 
but we also find that the ways of working are changing as well. There's a lot more remote working. People are becoming more familiar with using platforms, and we want to try to leverage on this as well just to continue to support um, business uh, growth and, and, um, and economic development. So, um, Renata, do you, there, there, there are a lot of questions, so yes. I, I think I, I need to, because you were, you were nicely segmenting them according to topic. So, <laughs> so um, I have the final one, I think, that is directed to Jerome. Um, it's from Nicolas Licciardo Polo. What is the investment time limit for the current pilot found? Most species and PE founds have a 7 to 10 year life. No, this is um, totally true, and um, in fact, w there's a time limit for us to uh, select, uh, for EIF to select the fund managers where that uh, will uh, back with the uh, Blue Invest Fund, and this time limit is set as uh, 31st of December this year, 2020, uh, but uh, after that, it's, uh, it's just a kind of internal clock. Uh, for uh, our internal decision process, so uh, we, we will uh, no longer select and approve a new transaction under that. And then uh, there's, it's a bit technical, sorry to go to that details, but then uh, we'll have a kind of two years window to finalize the legal negotiations with these funds to, uh, to transform our internal decision to a kind of firm commitment to, to these funds. So these funds will have, you know, more or less uh, uh, two years to, 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 to structure themselves and, and to turn into, uh, into action. But then these funds, they will have uh, the normal 10 plus uh, years uh, to operate and uh, to invest and, and divest their, their investments. But uh, so it's not uh, affecting at all the normal course of business of these uh, uh, funds that we would select from this, um, uh, from this uh, Blue Invest Fund. And again, uh, if we receive uh, good proposals um, either uh, later this year or a bit uh, uh, after, um, after we have selected the, the one we want to invest in from this Blue Invest uh, Fund, uh, we'll uh, certainly consider um, uh, over the next years to come uh, further funds uh, that would be supported either from a new Blue Invest Fund uh, uh, or from other pockets of money uh, EIF, we, we try to be uh, as open as possible and, and also to follow our, um, uh, the tr the, you know, when we start a trend and we see uh, also big uh, waves of interesting funds coming, we make sure that uh, we have uh, funding for that and, and we have very good discussion with the Commission uh, to help us on that uh, and also with member states and with uh, uh, with the European Investment Bank, and, and you can, uh, you have probably all seen that the EIB, which is uh, the mother company of the EIF, uh, is um, is uh, naming itself, you know, the EU Bank, but it's now is the EU Climate Bank as well. So, um, and 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 the climate uh, impact uh, would not let aside the blue economy. So, I'm pretty sure there will be funding for uh, startups from the EIF uh, uh, through our VC activities uh, for the long time. Uh, we have time for one last question, so I just want to maybe direct this toward participation and, and just to, to, to also tell everyone, um, because uh, the, the slides, the presentations, we will send to you. We have also recorded this session and the link will be made available to you. Um, the, the, for the last question, there was one on public sector, uh, public entities. Uh, could they potentially invest or contribute or gain benefit uh, with, the, with Blue Invest? And um, is it possible for private individuals to also invest in either projects or, or funds? And I, I open this uh, to, the, to the floor. Um, Can I add one as well? Yeah. There is one about fund management company that had, has other funds currently investing in other areas of focus like traditional tech as well because mm -hmm. there will be mixed VCs yeah. and yeah. 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 Okay. I, I can <laughs> answer first uh, the, the question about you know, fund managers that have other funds under management. We are totally open to that. We just, um, uh, for those that who knows you, who knows EIF, um, 
uh, we are looking uh, very carefully at governance issues and uh, conflicts of interest, but apart from that, uh, we are looking forward to receiving uh, your proposals um, directed to the blue economy. Um, and uh, regarding you know, the possible involvement of public entities uh, to, to support uh, the, the, and, and benefit from the blue invest, so I think you know, there's two, two different uh, aspects. You know, um, we extremely frequently have co-investors in the funds we support um, uh, in the form of uh, public entities, you know, uh, regions, uh, uh, member states, or sovereign wealth funds, and, and other public entities. Um, we also have public corporates uh, investing in funds. And they can also be uh, co-investors alongside the funds that we support, uh, you know, directly into the, the final uh, beneficiaries and into the SMEs. And um, typically, uh, the funds we are supporting, they do not invest in public companies, but they, um, in, in very uh, large, um, in very uh, frequent cases, they invest in companies that would offer their services uh, also to public institutions or to public um, entities uh, in, the, in the blue economy sector. And uh, there were some questions around uh, whether arbors and port activities or you know, um, uh, inshore uh, activities uh, in the water segment uh, fulfill uh, the, the blue economy criteria. This is a total yes. And uh, all the activities that are, you know, uh, involving more or less water uh, into the blue economy definition. Um, so there's a lot of, uh, for instance, there's a lot of uh, startups around water, wastewater treatment, uh, and then their services can be offered to municipalities or to public arbors. So there's a lot of interaction between the, you know, startups and the funds we are in, uh, and um, and the public uh, organisations. Ian, do you have anything to, to add? No, no, I think it's been a very successful uh, meeting. If we'll look at the questions and provide uh, answers on the website if there's any more questions that we need to answer. We will do. And um, I, I just wanted to take this opportunity to, to say a big thank you to, to Jerome and to Ian and to Daniela for being with us today. Thank you very much for taking time out of your schedules. And I also wanted to thank everybody who came into this webinar, everybody who has registered and is interested in the blue economy, in the Green Deal, and in helping to, um, to, to, to decarbonize you know, the, and, and to, to mitigate the impact of climate change. We will be in the space, and, and we are looking forward to connecting with each of you. Thank you very much, everyone, and um, I hope you have a good rest of the day. Thank you. And thanks, everyone, for attending. And thanks uh, to, to the team for organizing this event. It was a great pleasure to be here. Have a nice uh, afternoon and uh, keep safe. And uh, uh, let's hope we can all uh, resume our activities uh, in the, on the oceans and to protect them very soon. Okay. okay. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.